man, I'm still pissed off. I've been pissed off all weekend long. Serious, you can talk to my colleagues. I've been pissed off about that decision. Ortiz got robbed. Highway robbery in Las Vegas, Nevada. Let me tell you guys something. Shakur Stevenson, De La Santos, similar fight. Less connects, less punches landed. And guess who got the decision? Shakur Stevenson. De La Santos was coming forward just, the way, just as well as Lopez was, was missing, was frustrated. And he got the decision, unanimous decision. So these same three judges scored this fight. It was a boxing lesson, people. That's what Ortiz put on, a brilliant boxing lesson with a strategy. And he didn't get the credit for it. Shame, shame, shame on Vegas judges. Judges. Welcome to Deep Waters. We take deep dives on some of the hottest and juiciest topics in the boxing world today. Today, we are speaking about the highly controversial, very debatable decision of Tiafima Lopez over Jermaine Ortiz this past Thursday night on ESPN. I'm Chris Algieri. In studio, we have Paulie Malinaji. We are joined by ESPN analyst Timothy Bradley. And we have our guy, George Jakovic, with us, joining us. All right, guys, let's get into it. There's a lot to discuss here, a lot to debate. George, what do you got? Well, Tim, Tim started us off with, with, with a hot take. And just so if everyone doesn't know, Teofimo Lopez got a wide unanimous decision on one of the cards, 115, 113 on the other two. It was 117, 111 on one. So, Tim Bradley, this is a perfect panel that we have right here because you think Ortiz was robbed. And I'll just set it up right now. Chris Algieri thinks that Lopez won the fight. Tim, we went live after this fight till about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I can tell you, I read every single comment. There's like five or 600 comments. It was almost divided between people who thought Ortiz was robbed and people who thought that Lopez did just enough to win the fight, that Ortiz can't win a fight the way he fought. But, Tim, I can tell you, before we get into what you're going to say, it was almost unanimous. People said this was not an exciting fight. So, that being said... You just made a case for Ortiz. Tell us why he won that fight in your eyes. Chris must be on the pay scale, too. Chris, Ooh. you got your checks out to you, Chris? Man. Come on. You the, you a boxer, Chris. You, you Come on now, man. Look, the reason why Ortiz won the fight, he controlled every aspect of the fight. He's the one that made the fight what it was. You know, look, a lot of punches weren't thrown and landed. I can probably count on, on, on both hands. How many punches landed between the two? And I'm talking about effective punches. So a lot of these rounds were judged on the second criteria of the scoring. That's what it was. So it's called effective aggression. Now, what does that mean? You think that you got to be aggressive coming off on your front foot. No, you don't. You can be aggressively on your back foot, making the guy miss, making him pay with counters. And that's exactly what Ortiz did. It's called the ring general, being the ring general, because it wasn't a whole lot of punches thrown. There were more, however, there were more punches thrown than there was in Shakur Stevenson De Los Santos. You know, Shakur fought off his back foot a lot. Ortiz stood his ground in spots. And Ortiz, even, even when Lopez was like, come here, come here in the corner. He said, oh, okay, I'll come in the corner. I'll beat you up a little bit more and I'll get back on my game plan. You can see who had the strategy going into the fight from the first round. It was Ortiz. He was the ring general, the ring genius throughout the night. And so if you can't score a round between clean punches thrown, then you score it on who's the, big, who's the ring general. So in that, let's go back to the De Santos fight. The ring general was Shakur. He was the ring general. He was fighting when he wanted to fight on his terms. The same thing was here. However, the problem is Ortiz's name isn't Sugar Ray Leonard. It's not Shakur Stevenson. It's not Floyd Mayweather. It's the fact that his name is Ortiz. That's what it is. He's not the house. He's not the house. He's not bringing some. He's not bringing you know money and, and electricity to boxing. Guess who is? Lopez is, and that's the reason why he got the decision. That's the only reason why he got the decision. So 117, just put it this one. Steve Wisefeld, or was it Steve Wisefeld? 117, yep, yep. 111. That's outrageous. Tell me how many rounds. Give me get how many. I can give you seven rounds that Ortiz clearly won. Seven rounds that Ortiz clearly won. 
three rounds, clearly Lopez won, and there were two close rounds. So even if I gave those two close rounds to Lopez, it's I had a 7-5. Seven, 7-5. Five. Seven, five. But Ortiz completely outboxed this man, and he should be the victor. And that's the reason why I went ham after the damn fight. Because I didn't give this guy a chance whatsoever. I thought Ortiz was going to knock him the hell out. Lopez was going to knock him the hell out. However, he boxed a great game plan. He took he took Lopez out of his element, and he won that damn fight. You know, I, I first of all, I, I think there's a, a responsibility when you're a professional fighter to at least attempt to entertain in that way. And so for, from that perspective, I think kind of both guys took an L in the way the fight unfolded. You know, it, it really wasn't a, a memorable fight. Not that we were expecting the fight of the year, but we were. it was a fight that we were uh, looking forward to because uh, Ortiz had impressed in his career thus far, and Lopez... We know he's an enigma, but when he's on, he's on, you know? And we just figured, okay, the, the days of his lack of concentration are behind him. He's going to be on. And so the way the fight unfolded, I think, you know, it, it, it was disappointing a little bit, regardless of who you think won the fight. Having said that, um, you got to score the fight as far as boxing is concerned. We see other sports, for example, the Super Bowl was yesterday. You know, we see, the, and the overtime rules, for example, had been changed. And under the old overtime rules, last night, San Francisco 49ers would have won the Super Bowl. But under the new overtime rules, Kansas City Chiefs get to win the Super Bowl. You know, at least the overtime rules that I grew up watching in the NFL. Boxing has a situation where it's, they score fights the same way for a long time. You know, pretty much, you know, I don't know if these fights were the same way back in the day because they, they, the legend is Willie Pep was able to win a round without throwing a punch, and you would never be able to do that today. But nonetheless, overall, the scoring criteria hasn't changed much. So when I see people commenting or, or saying that, you know, Ortiz didn't deserve it because he fought a certain kind of fight, I think that's a little bit of an emotional take as far as the anger at the lack of entertainment. And that's like, you can be angry at lack of entertainment, but it doesn't not apply to, not, to doing the right thing or not doing the right thing. I don't know if you can really make a hard case for either guy. You know, I didn't think you could give Lopez more than six rounds. Um, a big reason for it is two things. Tim Bradley made one of the points uh, that I'm going to harp on as well. The only guy with an actual game plan in the fight was Jermaine Ortiz. Jermaine Ortiz, you could tell, came in with a game plan. He executed the game plan. It was not very exciting, but there was a game plan. There was a method to the madness Ortiz was trying to uh, impose in that fight. Teofimo Lopez was doing a lot of strange things. I, it didn't look like there was rhyme or reason. First of all, he wasn't cutting off the ring. But I'll give him, me, I'll give him a pass on that one because cutting uh, the ring off against a, an awkward southpaw like that, and Ortiz, Jermaine Ortiz was fighting awkwardly, is not as easy, you know? But then I, he did, was doing something. Even I was a guy who fought with my hands down. But later in my career, I realized that if I had to come forward, specifically in the Zab Judah fight, I remember I had to come forward against Zab and if I wanted to win that fight, you got to keep your hands up a little higher when you're going to the opponent. And that's because you're going to the danger. Guys who fight with their hands low, you're, you're trying to lure guys in. You're trying to set traps and lure guys in to make them counters. You can have your hands in a little bit more awkward positions when you're set in a counter-punching stance. But when you're aggressive and coming forward, your, it, your fundamentals become more important. Your feet have to become more importantly fundamentally, and your hand positioning has to become more important fundamentally because now you, have, you are going to the danger. So you don't want to just run into the danger with your hands down. Ortiz was coming, uh, Jim, uh, Lopez was coming forward against Ortiz, crossing his feet, not cutting off the ring, hands down. Even when he was landing a punch, he was only able to throw one at a time because his hands are all over the place. So there's no fundamental adjustments there, no instructions in the corner, no ability to adjust at all, not even a thought to adjust. In his mind, he was saying, this guy doesn't want to fight. I'm just, I'm just going to go forward. This is called boxing. This is not called follow the leader. So if it was called follow the leader, you know what? You, get a, you, you can even make a case for nine rounds uh, given in the Steve Weisfeld scorecard. But because it's not called follow the leader, it's called boxing, there's a difficult way to score this fight now because, okay, we get it. You're not entertained. You're, you're mad at the, at the game plan Ortiz has imposed, but you're also mad at the fact that a guy on the Teofimo Lopez's level can't get a guy like Jermaine Ortiz to fight. I look at great pressure fighters in, in, uh, that I can think of. One that I fought specifically, Miguel Cotto. I remember getting out of the ring with Miguel Cotto in the dressing room feeling like absolute garbage after such a physical fight and thinking to myself, how would Cotto fare against Mayweather at that time, thinking... Because Mayweather makes a lot of fights easy with his boxing style. And, and I had, when I was at my best, not that I was on Mayweather's level, but again, I knew how to make uh, pressure fighters look easy to beat when I was at my best. But Cotto was like impossible to beat him easy. Even if you were a sh good, good boxer, his pressure was the kind of pressure. He knew how to put you in difficult positions where it was never going to be an easy situation. So the fact that Tofimo Lopez is of this level but doesn't know how to do that at all 
was a little bit disappointing to where he couldn't make Ortiz's life a little bit more difficult than he should have because just simply on lacking fundamentals. Um, ultimately, I think they both lose uh, on the night. Also, I got to be honest with you, and this is not me changing stances. Uh, you know, I, I think when I was criticizing Devin Haney, people were like, oh, you're a Devin Haney hater. You're, I was never a Devin Haney hater. I was calling it like I see it. And not, just like I'm calling it like I see it now doesn't mean I'm on the Devin Haney bandwagon. But I do see a clear path to victory for Haney over Lopez now, you know, because Lo Haney is such a good back foot fighter. He is good at not giving you anything you want to you want to have. You're going to have if you want to beat Devin Haney. You're going to have to create yourself. It's going to be up to you to create something. He is not going to give it to you. And Lopez is starting to seem like the kind of guy who if you don't let him, if you don't kind of give him something to create off of, he doesn't know how to create it himself. And it showed a lot of that on, on uh, last week's fight. And I'll be honest with you, it, it, I couldn't give Lopez more than six rounds. I, I don't know how. It, in some ways, I can remember my fight with Adrian Broner, where I threw a lot more punches. Punch stats, I don't count, bro. I, I know even the ESPN analysts, you, I, oh, you guys love those punch stats, Tim. I, I noticed I you guys mentioned things. them a lot. I hate those things, too. They, it's somebody playing Nintendo. Uh, I know when there's lack of, lack of action and so there's something to talk about, you bring up the punch stats. It's a guy playing Nintendo just with his interpretation of what he, what's landing what's not. I remember I got into an issue with uh, Bob Canobio from CompuBox over my fight with Pablo Cano six, six or seven months before the Adrian Broner fight. And I was complaining because... He had Kano landing a lot more than he did. But I'm a guy who bruises easy, and I'm a guy who gets who bruises and cuts very easy. And I can remember in that fight after eight rounds, I was fresh as a daisy. But these guys had the copy box numbers like way over, over pulling for, for Pablo Kano. I didn't close the fight strongly, so that made it look even worse. But nonetheless, I had complained that I remember Kanobio had come up to me with an issue. What do they do? You're not going to convince me that anything was done, uh, wasn't done on purpose in the Broner fight. Because all of a sudden, in the Broner fight, Broner gets credit with 50% landed punches. In another fight where I got barely any bruising on me. And again, I'm a fighter who bruises easy and I cut easy. So, uh, uh, you know, you, 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 you allowed that, those kind of numbers to give the edge to uh, uh, the, guy, uh, the guy like Broner when the fight could have probably won either way. Just like last week. I, I can tell you, you can make a case for both guys, but I just edged towards the guy who actually had a game plan to, uh, and a path to victory. And, um, and I don't look at CompuBox with, for anything except for punches thrown, because those are easier to ca calculate. Punches landed are not easy to calculate. I'd rather rely on my own eyes than somebody else telling me what landed, because either way, a lot of times when you're throwing in combination and there's exchanges, you don't see exactly what's landing, and you got to press that button quickly. You don't know how cleanly they landed, how not cleanly they landed. There's a lot going on there uh, to, in order to calculate. The, 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 the stat is deceiving, you know what I'm saying? But to go to it like, like it's, the, it's the one stat we got to go to because we don't have anything else to talk about, to me, that's criminal, too, because then you're, you're doing a disservice to certain fighters. And uh, for me, like I said, it comes down to the ring generalship and the, uh, the fact that Ortiz had more of a game plan than it did Lopez. I'm not going to go throw papers up in the air and say, oh, you know what? You know, there was a definitive robbery here. But personally, on my end, it was one guy with a game plan and a path to victory, and he was executing it and following it. And for that reason, I got it either a draw or edging to Lopez. I mean, sorry, a draw or edging to Ortiz. Tim, you, you said uh, I'm on, if I'm on the take, if you're saying this is highway robbery, then you must be high on your own supply because th this is a very the, close fight. The bucket of the, the bottle of hope. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a close fight no matter <laughs> this, how you look at it. There was, was so little action. Break. Wait, wait, wait. Let me talk. Let me. You already got your All turn. Right. My turn. The, the, there was so little action in this fight. It became a very difficult fight to score. And listen, everything you said about Ortiz, the, the ring generalship, the game plan, the, the execution, for the first six rounds, 100%. You're absolutely right. He fought brilliantly for the first six rounds. The game plan was great. But the last six rounds, you can't win rounds by disengaging. There's no disengagement score. It, just because you're uh, disengaging, getting away from the guy and making the guy miss and doing nothing with it, and, and he was literally wilting under the pressure. So you mentioned, Paulie, your face used to mark up. Mine did too. And I was a boxer. It didn't take We're a whole right. lot. Yeah, well, exactly. But actually, Tiafimo marks up very easily as well. Mm -hmm. If you look at him at the, uh, the Taylor fight, I remember seeing his face at the fight and being, wow, I mean, his nose is swollen. He, he, you know, he had marks all over him. He marks up very easily. That shows you how limited, how, how many of those punches were glancing, gliding, slipping, sliding. The, uh, the, the otherworldly reactions of Tiafimo Lopez makes those copy box numbers 
not even worth looking at because he literally, all those punches were slipping, sliding. That kid's upper body movement is awesome. Listen, his footwork sucks. That was, it was a really poor. And his hand positioning. Uh, yeah, hand positioning. But when your upper body movement's that good and he really wasn't getting hit but with hand, those shots. But hand positioning also comes into your ability to hand, fire. That handcuff is off. That's correct. Absolutely. Handcuff is off. Are you guys having, but, are but you another having thing, this another thing we're, we're, we're not talking about that no one's mentioned yet, the body punching of Lopez. There's a reason that Ortiz slowed the way he did. There is a reason his output went down so much in the second half of the fight. Listen, the last two rounds, if you really look at it, he is trying to disengage to get to the end. He's staying, he's literally staying away, staying away. He's throwing punches to keep uh, to, Lopez off him, to go not on your to point, score. To go on your point, champ, there Good was, body there was less counterpunching. Yes. And, uh, and if you're gonna First move- First six rounds, if movement, counterpunch great. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna move, you're gonna, you gotta at least counterpunch because here's what I realized you as, gotta throw as, punches as I was rounds. learning in boxing myself. If, if I'm, somebody's making me miss but can't make me pay, the worst that happens is I'm gonna miss. So I'm gonna keep being aggressive. Well, they what, they don't have an ability to make me pay. But as soon as you're starting to counterpunch me, now I gotta stay handcuffed a little bit. I, I gotta pick my shots I gotta throw because otherwise, if I miss, I'm gonna get hit with a hard shot. Ortiz not counterpunching so well in the second half, like you called it, champ, uh, disengaging. Disengaging. It, it did make it look a little bit worse because again, it, it, it didn't, it didn't, it, what's the word I'm looking for? Didn't frustrate Lopez into well, not. It, it didn't deter him not, at all. Yeah, well, it didn't deter him. That's not why wanting to he's, be aggressive, he's walking you know? forward, literally but, walk, like a bully, just coming but forward. But don't get me wrong, Lopez is not without without Guys, criticism let, too let, because let he's just no, crossing his, his feet, his walking forward, is awful, looking like at the crowd one, like, hey, one, this guy doesn't want to fight. Well, you know what, time. dude? Fundamentally, you got It's up to you to force that. The ring is square. It's not a stadium. Let Tim jump in because Tim, I go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. Let him hear. Real quick. Guys, we don't score. We don't score fights on damage. That's MMA. You guys sound like you're scoring it on damage. You're talking about Lopez and have a scratch on him. No, no, I'm just, I'm just alluding to, to 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 the Copyback's numbers and how like if the punches look like they're landing but they're not. When you got a guy like Lopez who's so difficult to really, he's so quick. He's, he's so twitchy. It's hard to see if those punches land or not. So I think a lot of well, my point is a lot of those punches that may seem to have been landed or counted. I don't think they did. A lot of a lot of the punches that were thrown by Lopez didn't land either, well, and he was missing a lot. big. He was missing big. A lot of those body shots, uh, Ortiz was able to step back and get out of range. If you go back and watch the fight and watch it in slow motion, you'll be able to see that Ortiz escaped a lot of those those body shots that were thrown. I saw Ortiz get hurt several fight. times to the body now, and, and to the head. I, look, you saw Ortiz get hurt. Oh yeah, he got fight? hit with shots that he did not like for sure. And you didn't see, and you didn't see, or you didn't see the same thing for for Lopez. I think Lopez, or, got Lopez probably shot. got stung one. It was late. He, it was he late reacted. that hit. He but, reacted. But yeah. those are those are effective punches throughout the course of the round. So now, what we having like a close fight? Not many people. Not many of these guys are, are landing and connecting these shots. So you got to go by the second criteria, which was the same way that these judges, these three judges, did. Against Shakur Tim. and De La Santos. Tim. How the hell you? How Tim. the hell they score Tim. that fight? Tim, what second? Tim, what second criteria? You know what the criteria is? The A fighter who is more famous <laughs> gets the decision. That's the second criteria. That's the first criteria. The second criteria. The third criteria. The, the fighter that the network and the promoter wants gets the decision, no matter what. That's the criteria, unfortunately, listen, if, in boxing. If, if, listen, if guys. both guys are ineffective and both guys are not landing. The guy who's going forward is going to get the, the the benefit of the down. No he was way. ineffective. The last so, six but rounds, that, he was ineffective. But that, that is like a low IQ set way of scoring a fight, though. Way, because if they're no not landing punches, punches. In general if they need one of the punches. Then why didn't, then why didn't De La Santos win the fight? Well, well that, that was control. That was a very that, different thing. Listen, we, we was able to control him. We but it's always the A side. Look at that. What a coincidence. We... We spoke to Teofimo Lopez after the fight, and Tim, just to that point, what 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 a lot of people saw was a guy coming forward missing punches and a guy moving backward missing punches. That's yeah. what a lot of people seem to see. But we Dude. caught up with Teofimo Lopez. I'll, I'll let you speak after, but this is what Teofimo Lopez had to say after the fight. This fight with uh, Jermaine Taylor, Jermaine uh, yeah. Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, you know, we got the win. Um, definitely someone came here to fight, and that was myself. The other opposition did not want to come to fight, and they obviously showed. What can I do with a, a person that's racing and running? You know, it's uh, it's obviously, um, you know, it is what it is, right? A lot of people were saying here at the Mikel Arena that Jermaine he basically came for a, for a marathon, man, because he was running that whole time. Right? Yeah, and I wanted to show the people by doing what by stepping back and boxing backwards, and he didn't want to commit. So you, you know, um, if they want to play that game. 
if people in, in the boxing world want to play that game, then we'll expose them in that way, that they don't want to compete. Everybody's just like I said. Good. Um, and to all the champions that are here on ProBox TV right now, they don't want to win. They want clout. They want to be known as famous fighters, but nothing more than that. They don't want to become champions. They don't want to sacrifice and take the blood, sweat, and tears. And tonight is show. You show that you're, you're one of the best in the 140 pounds, man. Who do you like to fight next? To be honest, we're going to go back to what people want to say. Okay. Oh, there, we got to go down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris L. Jerry is going to ask you a question. Chris. What's up, champ? Congratulations. Um, Thank you. I don't know if you know. I I didn't expect Ortiz to fight the way that he did. Did did you guys expect that? And and what was you know? Did you have a plan B in case he did come out southpaw the entire time and then fight more of a boxing style than than actually standing and trading with you? The thing is, uh, champ Chris Algieri, listen, it the fact that we worked on those things. We worked on the shifting. You know, I tried those things with him. However, he would like double quickly jump out the range. You know, and it's so difficult at those moments when we're shifting and trying those moments and he's not there because he's running and running and trying to survive. I would understand if he was run back and then try to counter from it, you know, try to get me off the ropes or something. He didn't want to. And the reason why is because my ring IQ, my speed, my power, the moment those things come into play, they don't want to show themselves. Hey, champ, I got a question for you. It's George. First of all, thanks for taking some time. You got your little guy with you. So I, uh -huh. I know you want to get some family time in. He's looking good. He looks happy. Happy boy. <laughs> so, so, champ, I, I want to ask you this. It's something that Tim Bradley was saying during the fight. He said that you just would not cut off the ring, and that was why Ortiz was getting some of the rounds. Um what what do you think about that? Were you having a problem cutting off the ring due to his style moving so much? It's just guys, it's like uh it's like a man trying to grab a chicken. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. It's it, you can only do so much. I mean, come on. Even when I was cutting the ring, the guy's just ducking as low as he can and running around out the side. You know, and when we cut the ring, it's to cut that side to set up the other side. And what happens is they're not there because they don't want to compete. They don't want to fight. Listen, um, people could be as, as hard as they want on me, but until I face a real fighter again, this is the kind of uh, uh, events you're going to have. And it's sad to say. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, you, you said but, a real fighter, and people keep asking you this. Um, but but my, my last question is, uh, and I heard someone say it. I didn't hear your answer. I know you're going to rest, but who... Would you like to fight ne next? You talked about fighting a real fighter. Who do you want to fight next? Are you, are you not thinking about that right now? Right now, I'm here to celebrate my son being here. You know, my wife and all those things, my family, everybody here, you know, uh, my team. We're here to celebrate each other. And I'll be back in the ring uh, Monday. I'll be back training again. This was not a fight. This was a, this was a uh, Roy Jones chasing chicken. You know what I mean? And that's really what it was. Uh, I got to talk to Roy Jones about how we catch more chickens, you know? That's it. <laughs> so, Tim Bradley, I, I asked him about cutting off the ring, and he really didn't answer it. Uh, all you guys are unanimous. You say he wasn't cutting off the ring. Talk about the the stylistic problems that he's showing, his lack of fundamentals, um, and also the fact that he doesn't seem to be able to control his emotions. He just doesn't. He was frustrated during the fight. Does he need a new trainer? He doesn't know how to cut off the ring. He he clearly does not fight well as the aggressor, is what I'm hearing you guys say. So what are your reactions to that and what Te Teofimo said? Well, the, my reaction is is that this calm demeanor right here is how he should have handled the post-fight after the fight. Yeah. Mm. You know, I, it, it almost seemed to me that he was surprised that he actually won the fight on the scorecards. He was kind of confused. He was like, I won? Oh, hell yeah. And he went crazy, went reckless. I mean, he said some outlandish things. That's the know, adrenaline, like, Chip. The adrenaline. <laughs> Bro, listen, man. But he needs to learn how to control that. Yeah. However, this interview was actually quite pleasant to listen to. Because he's um, calmer. He's got no less adrenaline. He, had, he, <laughs> he already had, had the adrenaline dump. Now he's a look, human being. Again. Look, he had, he, had, he had some good explanations of what he thought was going on inside the ring. Um, it is difficult to cut off the ring against a fighter like Ortiz status. However, it can be done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he lacked. 
No one expected. I don't think he, him, or his his corner uh, expected Ortiz to come, come out in southpaw stance and box as well as he did. That Cuban trainer that he brought in, and I forget his name. God, God, sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. But the Cuban trainer he brought in did some wonders with Ortiz. I have to tell you that because Ortiz has so many flaws in his game, just as well as Lopez. He tightened him up. Yep. Mm -hmm. He tightened him up. His footwork still a little iffy. You know, but he was setting things up, moving left, then swinging back right, dipping underneath, and then getting around to that weak side. And Lopez couldn't figure that out. When you're in those type of situations like that, you got to forget about the head and you got to hit the body. You know, you got to try to corner him. And when you do hit the body, you got to keep your hand there and then push him back to be able to pin him inside. That requires that. hand positioning, Tim. He, he didn't have to tell female hands all it. over the place. That was the I, problem. I, I, but, but but that's 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 the way Lopez fights, and that's but the way you can't do that going forward. forward. You got to make the adjustment if you're going to come forward. Well, he, he's he's not a forward fighter. He's he's an intuitive well, counterpuncher. Yeah, but that's but, the thing, and you got a fighter now. He he, even, he said it in the post fight press conference, uh, in the post fight interview we just saw. He expected him to he expected to be able to box going backwards. That was his game plan. Well, if the guy doesn't come forward to you, you got to make the adjustment. You, you know, got to go forward now. You know what this reminded me of? Where we saw it before Regis Progre when he fought Zaria. He has he didn't know how to go forward. He mm -hmm. wasn't he was a counterpuncher. He's an yeah. intuitive counterpuncher. He's a very athletic guy. He uses, like you said, building off of your opponents and what they bring to you rather than being able to set it up. And I watched it again this morning, Tim, and you had a, an, an awesome point about moving Ortiz into positions and then cutting it off with certain punches, meaning yes. walking him into the left hook, which he did once in the fourth round. Once. Walking him into the right hook, which he did once in, like, the 11th round. There were so many opportunities for him, which there, he was throwing those, that was, nice straight right hand to the body just to come right back was, up. But like you said, the hand position. There, and there's also one thing Ortiz was doing very well. It disengaged all of that. And you guys are going to understand this. I'm going to try to make it as, as lame and as possible for everybody at home listening to us. You guys as fighters are going to understand it. Ortiz, Our fans are pretty smart, though. Ortiz, they're they're, they're going to no, get but, it. Okay, from, from, uh, so I'm trying to give you the visual perspective. Ortiz would go left, right, left, right off the ropes, right? And, and you know, you're, you're trying to cut off a guy. He's in the southpaw position, and you're trying to cut him off as he's going left, right, left, right with quick feet. And he's also in the southpaw stance. So cutting him off when you go right, you got to be careful you don't walk into a straight left hand, right? So that's why it's a little bit more complicated against shifty southpaws to cut them off. But Ortiz, as Lopez would get into posi punch position and, and, and start to slowly close, what he would do, he would change levels. He would drop. Yep. And that's the thing. When, you, when you're getting close to a guy, but you're kind of tentative because he's moving in awkward ways, and then all of a sudden he drops on you, you think he's going to shoot at you. You think he's going to throw a punch at you. Because a lot of times when you drop, it can be a feint, but it can also be you're pumping a, a, a big hook or a big shot or because now you can, come, you can come from that drop with power from your legs. So automatically your instinct is to take a step back. You know, now you got to start all over again against a shifty guy. So there were things that Lopez uh, at times could do, and then Ortiz is able to disengage it with that drop. But you help your, you don't do yourself any favors with the bad footwork and bad hand positioning. Because if you at least keep the footwork and the hand positioning, sometimes, not more times than not, but at times you're going to get to him enough to where then even his movement, he's going to become less comfortable in that movement because he knows you can get to him. Even if, if that drop allows him some time at, at once in a while, it's not going to allow him the time every time. And, well, and how with, about bad a feint, footwork, with bad well, footwork, well, that, that's exactly what I was going to say, Tim. In the second half of the fight, feint? there was a lot of opportunities. But for even Lopez. with the feint, you got to have your pants but, in position so yeah, the feint can work. I think it was more well, the I'm, footwork than anything. It was Lopez overthrowing punches and landing off balance. That's why he was only getting one off at a time. Like you said, when the guy drops and you end up over him with a, with a big leaping shot, there's no or, more balance or, the, or fainting but position. But or the guy drops and he actually makes you step back because you're like, oh shoot, he's gonna he's, he's gonna fly in with a shot. Jittery, you know, he's yeah. gonna throw a big hook. Oh, you know what I mean? Like I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. All of a sudden he drops on me. You know, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, be careful. You know what I mean? He might mm -hmm. come with a big hook. He might come with a, something wild that I don't see. So you you take that step back. Now all of a sudden, what happens? Now the guy's got room again, and you got to do it all over again. That's why hand positioning and balance is important. Great stuff it's here, true. guys. George Jakovic, I hear that we have some some comments to go over. If you wanna. Pick out some of the some of the juiciest. Well, um, I want to start with a Bob Aaron quote. He, he's the promoter, uh, Tim, of the fight. What Bob said was, "It was really terrible. We didn't know this would happen. <laughs> this wasn't a fight. He was running around the ring. This isn't boxing. At most, I gave Ortiz two rounds, maybe three rounds. People are paying good money to watch good athletic competition, and this was disgraceful." So he's talking about the. Uh, 
you know, whether people why, are entertained. Why don't we quote well, guys who have a, a, a vested interest? Web, vested interest. Yeah. If Ortiz was Bob's guy, like the way or Lopez is Bob's guy, Lopez would, you know, Bob would be saying, oh, he outboxed him. This is called boxing. Well, why, Paulie, why are we even quoting somebody who has a vested interest? I, I, I mean, I'll I get it. You Bob's making a point there. I get it. I agree. For one perspective, I'll agree. I think both guys lost in the way this fight played out. Yeah. There, this is still entertainment, and you got there is a responsibility to entertain. But it's on both guys. It's on both. Like I, I go back to Miguel Cotto. For me, he's probably my favorite fighter of my generation as far as entertainment value is concerned. Even though I fought him, you couldn't have a boring fight when Miguel Cotto fought. Even if you tried to make it boring, it was not going to be boring. You know what I mean? There's no shot. That's why that guy was so one of the one of the biggest uh, fan friendly fighters of of my generation. You, you, there's, there's ways, it takes two to tango, guys. I get one guy wants to disengage, one guy couldn't cut off the ring, and then unfortunately, you know, the styles didn't, didn't mesh. But it, it's never just on one guy. It's never just on one guy. I don't everybody wants to blame one guy. It's never just on one guy. But check this yeah. out. Like, I understand where, I understand where Bob is talking about because from an entertaining value, no, it wasn't entertaining. It was a perfect moment for Ortiz or Lopez to really shine. And, you know, win, lose, or draw, um, if they both put up a fight, they'll be back. So Ortiz kind of shot himself in the foot just trying to get the victory. Um, and what people got to understand is, is that Ortiz had to fight that way. He wasn't the stronger puncher in there. Um, if, he, and if you notice, any, every time he got hit is when he led. When he led. You know, he, he didn't get hit that often when he allowed Lopez the lead and then he was able to counter. But when he led, he got hit off, you know. But he was just trying to win the fight any but, way he but, can. But this way the cliches come in, champ. The cliches. Everybody's got a cliche until it doesn't apply for the cliche. Until the politics. So, you know what? This time we won't use the cliche. The cliche here should be win now, look good next time. That's always the cliche exactly. people talk about. Okay, so exactly. that's what Ortiz did. He tried to win now exactly. and look good next time. It exactly. didn't work, right? Exactly. It only works when A-side point. wins. And again, this is that not a criticism on Lopez either. I think there's criticism of both guys here. I think this fight was close. I, I just feel like Ortiz is the only one that had an actual game plan. But Only I, the so reason why I read that quote, and I hear you because Aaron does have a vested interest, but I read, listen, there were like 500 uh, comments by the fans after we went live, and that was the sentiment of many of them. Not saying they're wrong or right, but it was just, uh, he, he, Bob Aram's quote, quote was what a lot of fans said, but I do have another one. Look, uh, Chris, quick, you remember? Go ahead, Tim. This, let me just say this real quick. So, the mantra at Top Rank Boxing is now, it's changed. It's completely changed. It's, we don't care who wins. All we care about is entertaining fights. So like, like let's Pro say Box TV. Yeah. that's it. Entertaining fights. That's it. So if Ortiz went in, there, went in there and sold out and put on a great show, you know, he can come back, right back. However, he was there to win a championship. And that's what people got to understand. He was there to win a championship. He had a strategy to do that. I believe he did that. You know, it was or Lopez's job, Lopez's job to figure out a way to corner him Tim, and then knock him the Tim, hell out. Tim, did, and he didn't do Tim, that. Tim, am I am I wrong or did I hear this right? Uh, that Top Rank just offered uh, Shakur Stevenson a contract extension of fifty million or so. Was, was that something I heard? Was that correct? Um, that, or, or a rumor? I, that, that, th those check. numbers, those numbers are, 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 are I think are off. However, they did offer him a contract, okay. and I'm so not sure this is this. Okay, that, that's that's my point exactly. You're in the entertainment business; they're prioritizing entertainment, but you still want to resign Shakur Stevenson. You still want to resign Shakur Stevenson, no matter what, right? So, are you yeah. in the entertainment business or are you in the top rank business? Let's still let's let's still cut the chase, bro. Promoters well, are promoters. A side is still well, A side. The vested interest is still the vested interest. Let, let, let's cut to the chase. We as fans here, because. When we're talking like this, we're just like fans, even if we're ex-fighters, we're just like you guys at home. And as fans here, we can discuss it for what it is. But th that, th all those quotes from the people with vested interests, bro, they, they, don't, they don't count. They're not worth, they're not worth the air wasted on, on, the, on them being spoken. They're not worth anything to me. Chris, we talked after the fight. Um, you, you talked about the flaws that, that Lopez showed, not being able to cut off the ring, uh, lack of controlling his emotions. One of the comments was, from Kyle IS7, Algeri laughs off Lopez needing a new trainer, then spends the rest of the night pointing out fundamental flaws in Lopez's game. So the question is, does he need help? Not necessarily a new trainer, but other fighters may fight the way Ortiz fought because they know Lopez coming forward is less effective. So Chris and, and panel, the, the question is, does he need more help in that corner? 
Listen, I, 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 la I didn't laugh at all if I said that. If he had won the fight, nobody would have mentioned that. But or, um, Lopez has had other trainers in camp. He had Joey Gamash. He's a friend of mine. He's a, a great former, former, uh, former champion. Um, and they worked a lot of defense. They worked on a lot of different lift, different things. And I, I've, I've talked to Joey about his work with Lopez. So it's not that he's never had other coaches or, or that he needs a whole new coach or revamp everything. But, yes, yeah, so, uh, those flaws that he showed, uh, like cutting off the ring. And, again, I'm, I'm going to mention Regis Progre. He was another guy who has been a multiple-time world champion, who's very, very high and uh, very deep into his professional career, still couldn't cut off the ring. So uh, it's not always just the coaches. Um, it's, it's making the mental, mental adjustment in your mind. Listen, if we listen to that interview, Lopez said everything right about what he was supposed to do. He just didn't do it. Knowing what to do and executing are different things. And I think, Paul, you alluded to that in terms of what, what the certain, certain aspects of Ortiz's game that were, not, that were hurting Lopez in terms of being able to make those adjustments. But also, it's a lot of those, a lot of those flaws he, he has accrued is because he's so physically gifted. He's so yep. physically talented. Athletic. He has yep. such great reactions. In the way he can works. fight yeah. in ways yeah. that don't really make sense. Yeah. The Roy Jones effect, the Manny Pacquiao yep. effect. You can't teach those things. There are there are aspects of 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 that makes Tiafimo so so what makes him so good are the things that are actually going to hurt his fundamentals. But yep. you got to be able to cut back and be able to go back to the fundamentals because the fundamentals always work. I don't care who you are. The kid's fast and strong, so the fundamentals are going to work. Like you said, Jim, he walks forward like a, like a Floyd Mayweather walking somebody down with his hands up. He's a lot to deal with. Yeah. He's physically strong. He's explosive. And you can also shoot from that. Exactly. And yep. you, can, you can create opportunities from there. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's not as cut and dry as I think some of these people are saying in the comments in terms of, oh, he just needs a new trainer. It, this, it, boxing is very nuanced. You can even keep the same trainer. I mean, I think there's a thing he can work on with his father. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think he needs a new trainer. I, I think these are but it's also specific it's, it's, things it's you can obviously nothing he doesn't know. Gym, he know? literally said yeah. exactly what he needed to do in the post. This kid went to the Olympics. If you went to the Olympics, let me tell you, if you went to the Olympics, you know how to fight fundamentally. Because yes. amateur boxing really, really imposes its an importance on fundamental boxing uh, in order to. He didn't throw. And, he and, didn't throw. He didn't throw any jabs. No, that's what I'm saying. He, 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 he's gotten away from that. He's gotten away from that. I mean, let's face it. Even guys like Dr. Roy Jones, they went away from the fundamentals as their career went on. And this that was an Olympic silver medalist who deserved the gold medal. So, I mean. These guys are Olympians. Tofi was an Olympian. I, I think he has the fundamentals. If he, he just his, have to have his the presence dad, of mind his dad on. said that he doesn't have to throw a jab. His dad said that he doesn't have to use a jab. Think about that. Does he need a new trainer? He said he don't have to use a jab. Yes, you do. You have to use your jab. I think he needs a new trainer. Senior, yes, senior says somebody a lot of things. that can come in, <laughs> somebody that can come in and actually show him a few things and not. Four eyes are better than two, guys. Yeah. We know that. Four eyes are better than two. Bring somebody in that can help him with his fundamentals, help improve it, not taking anything away from his father. His father's done a good job with him, but just add somebody that has a fresh pair of eyes that can see what his father is not seeing and help move this kid in the right direction. Because if he fights somebody that just allows him to come forward and they're fighting off their back foot and they're countering the crap out of him like a Devin Haney, he's going to struggle every single time against that type of style. But if you put a guy like Matias in front of him, he's going to look good. Yeah, I was, I, it's funny. Throw. I was thinking that too as, I, as I'm yeah. watching the fight. I'm thinking that. I'm like, you know what? He may actually beat Matias, but now... I'm not sure he's even competitive against Haney. That, 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 it's funny, like my, uh, my, my opinion was evolving as I'm watching the fight and I'm looking at these flaws, but I'm, I'm also thinking about the fact of how, how good he actually can be when you try to go get him. Yeah. And I was like, man, it's like this, you know, this, these are ever evolving opinions as, as, you, as you watch George, more and more of these George, fighters. I think I said that on the live, right? Like people are gonna think, God, I'm gonna rip me apart for this, but I, I think he still beats Matias. Like it's just, it's just the way the styles match up. But I agree with you, champ. I, I now have Haney at the top of the division at 140. Yeah. You know, because I had but, but Haney against Matias is, is the area. Yeah, if he's even yeah. necessarily beat C, who knows how Haney Matias works yeah, out, right? So, boxing so it, math doesn't work. Yeah, but yeah it, it never it, does. Yeah. No. Hey guys, um, we got something interesting coming up Friday, February 16th. Tim Bradley, you're going to be calling some ESPN fights. Oh, Shaki Foster is fighting Abraham Supernova. But guess what? Pro Box TV has got some fights the same night. You can see right there. Picasso and Cardenas is the main event, Foster and Nova. So, Paulie, Chris, and Tim, we've got dueling cards on Friday <laughs> night. Don't, don't do this to Tim. You know, Tim works with both networks. Don't do it, Tim. <laughs> don't, do it. Don't, don't, involve, don't involve Tim. I'm biased. You know, good fighters and great fights. Pro Box TV, 
Special edition Wednesday Night Fights on Friday night because, hey, you know, it's Valentine's Day. We'll let you have your, your love on romance on, uh, on uh, uh, Valentine's night. And, you know, we'll shift over our Wednesday Night Fight series so you guys don't miss it and get a divorce. Uh, we'll, get, we'll give it to you on Friday night this week. Well, what did you say? You said romance on Wednesday, violence on Friday? Yeah, That's Valentine's and, and, and violence. Yeah, Valentine's <laughs> Wednesday, violence Friday. <laughs> so, Chris, I mean, Tim, sorry, uh, ESPN, same night, man. Oh, yeah. You guys are going up against it. Cha championship fights, baby. That's what we bring, you know, and competitive fights. I, I think I think Nova and uh, Ashaki Foster is going to be a great entertaining fight. Yep. I think Nova knows what he has to do to be able to beat Oshaki Foster, who's a slick boxer, very calculated, very smooth inside the ring, can fight from any angle. He can turn southpaw orthodox. We've seen what he's done in the past coming off like a fight. I think it was like a round in the year, uh, a round of the year, uh, either a contender or he might even won it in his last fight against Hernandez. Um, but I'm expecting the war. I'm expecting the war. I'm expecting Nova to come and bring that pressure. Uh, like he does, he has a punching power that can hurt Oshaki Foster, and you know he has a, again he has the punching power that I think that can that can knock out the champion. So it's gonna be real interesting to see if he can cut off the ring better than than, than better than Lopez did against Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, you know, tune in and, and and check it out. The busy night, Paulie. Yeah. I mean. Busy night, yeah, and like you busy night, but does Pro Box TV ever disappoint you? You know if you've been tuning in to Pro Box TV religiously on, on our Wednesday Night Fight Series, we know we, we don't disappoint you. And if we do, we don't bring those fighters back ever again. You know what I mean? We, there is a very specific thing with Pro Box TV. We want entertainment, and we actually uh, abide by it. You know, we don't have a vested interest because pretty much we're not signing a lot of guys, if, if any. You know, we, we're just bringing in fighters to fight each other for the entertainment of the fans, and we look at their styles, how they match up, and we want to make sure that you guys at home are entertained. Friday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. Yeah, yeah. you got ESPN, too. We, but, we, I mean, we Night literally Night, don't care. We literally don't who care where, who wins. Don't care who wins the fights. We don't have a red and blue corner. We don't have an A side. We have a B side. And listen, if you fight hard and you put on a good show, you'll come back. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many losses you have. have. Doesn't matter how badly you lose. If you fight and you put, you put it all out there, you can come back on I our mean, air. And listen, boxing's in a, in a good place. Any, this is a good problem to have. We got boxing on two different networks at the same time. You can be switching back and forth. I mean, boxing's in a great place when you when you've got more more than less. And, and to throw Tim That's a bone, right. to throw Tim a bone, I think Nova is in a, a win or die situation here. You know, I yeah. think he's got he's in a it's a big fight for him. And so I think he's in a fight with that uh, that kind of desperation. Well, Nova's been and walking Oshaki that he's been walking that tightrope for a while. Yeah. He needs he needs these so. wins every every time out. All right, well, guys, listen, it's going to be a great night of fights on Friday. I do have one last quote about the Teofimo lopez Jermaine Ortiz fight. Callus Water 2224 said, I'm glad I missed this fight. So, <laughs> how do you know? Go. You missed that, it. How do you know you're glad you missed at, it? At the end of the day, the fans that's, lost on this one. That's yeah, all yeah, yeah, you know, you know, How do you know you, you're glad you missed it? You don't know. Maybe you would have liked oh, it. Maybe you would have hey, been listen. able to join the debate a little bit better. If you watched it, you can join our debate at least. You can, you know, you're able to Guys. comment with an educated eye because you saw it. You can't, you can't we're, say that. You didn't see the fight. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up, but I will say real quick, the Super Bowl was yesterday. The underdog Kansas City Chiefs won, and I'll tell you what, I'm gonna bring this back to boxing. All you had to do was that ask a boxing fan who was going to win that fight. The underdog won yesterday. And you know why boxing fans know? Because that date, February 11th, 1990, Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. So if there was ever a day to bet the undercard, it was February 11th. Underdog. 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 <laughs> the Chiefs are Super Bowl. Super Bowl has no undercard. The underdog. <laughs> they are. See, I got boxing on my I got boxing, boxing on, on my the mind. mind all the time. So there you go. All right, guys. Listen, Teofimo Lopez retained his title. We talked about it. We're going to talk about it some more. Don't forget Friday night, Pro Box TV, Wednesday night fights on a Friday. Make sure you make sure you subscribe. Go to YouTube, subscribe to Pro Box TV. Hit that like button. Hit the like button. And champions, remember, Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.